Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to This Week in Mythic Plus for the week beginning January 14th in North America and January 15th over on the European servers. This is the first week of the new patch, so you might be thinking that this is the first week of a new affix pattern, but in fact this is sort of a weird off-season week, so there are a few strange things going on this week. You're not going to get a residuum out of your weekly chest this week or next week, but the AP rewards in those chests are doubled, and the affixes remain the same as they would have been uh, as if the patch didn't happen for Mythic Class. So the affixes active this week are Tyrannical, uh, Volcanic, Teeming, and the Beguiling pattern is Void Heavy. So for high-level keys, for like keys in the 20-plus range, the combination of Tyrannical and Void are two very, very problematic affixes uh, on those rows. Teeming is also a pain. Teeming Tyrannical is a lot less bad than Teeming Fortified, uh, but there are still some dungeons where Teeming really slows down the dungeon or adds some really difficult pulls in. And Volcanic is generally the easiest thing on that row, one of the easiest affixes in the game. Uh, so that's good news for you know most most push groups, most groups, even if you're just farming 15s or 10s. If you're, far if you're farming something like 15s or 10s this week, uh, then it's a fairly good set of affixes. But the thing is, there's not much reason to do Mythic Plus keys this week. The main reason to do keys this week is to get yourself as high a level of key as possible for next week. So you probably want to do one key this week per character at the highest level you can go. We think that if you do a 19, uh, you'll be getting a 15 in your box next week, and that would be the level that you'd need to do one of next week to then get uh, the you know 465 reward, 475, 475 reward in your box the week after. Some very high number reward in your box the week after. So uh, that's the that's the kind of plan that a lot of players are going for. 119 this week, and then spend the rest of the week doing horrific visions and islands. Uh, then next week, 115, and spend the rest of the week farming like plus sixes, because that's the highest uh, level dungeon that will actually give better end of dungeon rewards than anything else next week. Uh, and then the week after that's when you can actually start doing multiple 15s in the week for rewards. So uh, with that in mind, let's take a look at which dungeons would be the best one to get your weekly 19 possibly in. Okay, so as always, these are my weekly routes found on Raider.io. For the next like three or four weeks, there probably won't be weekly routes, nor will there be this video series because it's going to be a very busy time and we won't know the new Awakened routes. Uh, but for now, this is this is what we got. Uh, and this is Teeming Ataldazar. Teeming Ataldazar has some really nasty things going on. So there's RNG components to which teeming enemies spawn. You'll either get these two, you get some combination of these two enemies added to this pack, this entire pack being added here, which is really nasty. This pack is completely unreasonable to pull. Uh, or you'll get this pack here. And you can get, I think you can get up to two of those three spawns. Uh, so that element of RNG can be really annoying, especially if your plan were normal, would normally be to like, you know, pulling these three mobs in with this is reasonable, but adding these makes it unreasonable. So uh, that element of RNG means most groups kind of make a route like this one here that's kind of agnostic. It doesn't care what the, those RNG spawns are. This works for whichever one it is. Uh, but that means that you have very few sources to get your count from. So uh, if you don't, don't want to pull this pack, which I don't, you basically have to pull the middle pack with this strategy. Uh, and the middle pack is scary. Now, this week is tyrannical. Uh, there are no affixes that really empower this middle pack, so it's as easy as this middle pack ever gets. Um, I think it's a good week to pull it. I would recommend not being scared of it if you can. If if there's any remote hope of pulling this thing, I, I would try and do it. Otherwise, your only real option is to like add, add this stuff over here. Uh, and you have to add a lot of other enemies to make up for this mid pack. It's a lot of count. So uh, just try, yeah, try pulling this thing. Uh, you know, no, none of the affixes are too bad with it. There's no Grievous, there's no Sanguine, there's no any of that stuff, there's no Fortified. Uh, it's definitely doable. My strategy for this dungeon as well involves pulling zero voids this week. Uh, you, of course, have this void here that basically requires you to do a death skip in uh, and probably out as well. Uh, so that I'm, I'm just going to, you know, we're, we're going to skip those with a death or some kind of fancy vanish Biraz thing or Shadow Maldrez thing. Um, and then this void we're going to skip by pulling all the trash on this side and then going up around this way and then just coming down through the middle and never actually having to touch this void. Uh, which is a, a really nice way to avoid fighting extra Void Touch Emissary. If you're doing this in a lower level key, you may want to just pull this thing so that you can then have people who die release and run back through that way. Uh, but if you're doing this in a high level key where you want to pull as few voids as possible, then this is a, a good strategy. All in all, not a not a bad week for a Taldazar. Void Week Freehold, this first pull, uh, in a lower level key, you can usually bloodlust this first pull and get away with that. As you start getting to the like 20, 20 plus range, you're going to want to start bloodlusting Skycap and Crag just to get him off of his stupid bird as fast as possible because that's pretty lethal uh, the longer he stays on that thing as you start running out of defensive cooldowns. Uh, but in a lower level key, you can usually just pull all these things in Lust. 
in high level key, you may still want to try and pull all these things. You just probably need to not commit your lust there. Uh, and then the rest of the dungeon, so the, the active captain is, or the captain that is on our side is Jolly. So you're going to have to fight Raul and Eudora. That's the hardest combination of captains and it's tyrannical. Uh, so for that reason, I'm, I'd be really worried about Freehold this week. Just getting through the first and second bosses in a sufficiently high level key uh, is going to be challenging. Outside of that, nothing too awful here. That you know, there are some voids in the way, but you don't have to pull all that many of them compared to some of the other dungeons. Uh, and most, like the, the later two bosses, aren't too bad. So it's mostly most of the dungeon is going to be on whether or not you can defeat Eudora. Another thing worth noting is that since it's Void Week, um, the dog is the emissary. The thing you have to do to to join the crew. And there's also the void in the way here. So if you have a rogue, it's possible for them to still do the entire dog event. They just have to quickly like dart into where the dog is here uh, and behind a pillar and then quickly dart out again and they can avoid aggroing this void. Um, but if they, if you are trying to do this the old fashioned way, you know, and just have your group like slowly follow around the dog, usually the best way to do that is going to be like your healer stands over here out of combat and your tank just runs around with the dog and then your healer mass reses them without having ever gotten in combat uh, and you get through it eventually that way. All right, King's Rest Tyrannical. Tyrannical, a tough affix uh, for King's Rest. The bosses are, are fairly tough in here, as is teaming, actually. Teaming adds a lot of extra pulls to the dungeon, and it makes the few pulls that you can combine in this dungeon basically impossible to combine. Void is also bad here, because you got this void and this void. It's it's kind of all bad. It's kind of all bad news. Um, there's <laughs> You even have this stupid Tides here. Yeah, I, I, I hate this dungeon this week. I think that... Uh, it's good that this is the last week of Beguiling, because this is a, an appropriate send-off to this. Like, almost all of these emissaries are, are pretty annoying. Uh, if you do choose to go in here this week, it's not, like, it's not, like, unkillable. You're probably just going to have to take many of these pulls very slowly and do them, like, half a pull at a time with crowd control uh, on emissaries. You got this fun little void-touched emissary here that's a big DPS check to kill it before, uh, you know, you get overrun by the, the enemies in this gauntlet. Uh, and, of course, you're probably still going to need to save your bloodlust for bosses, because it's tyrannical, so you'll need to bloodlust the Golden Serpent. Uh, and you'll probably have one up for Machimba, and you probably want to use one for Kula the Butcher, and if it comes back up during King Dazar, that's a good idea as well. My route that you can see here involves skipping Zul. This is going to be uh, possibly fixed next week. We're not quite sure if it's going to be fixed by uh, on the 21st or on the 14th, so if this is fixed on the 14th, uh, then you'll instead have to pull this, and if you pull this, there's not really much you can skip because of it. You can skip like these two and pull this instead. That'll work instead. So this, I'll probably re-upload this route to suggest doing this, actually, so that uh, it doesn't bait people in case they have fixed the Shadows will skip. All right, Shrine of the Storm. Void Week is the big problem affix that we're dealing with here. Uh, you have the Void that interferes with a normal skip here, so you're going to have to kill it uh, along with these things, which can be pretty rough on your tank, and there's not really good line of sight spots nearby, so it's a pretty serious DPS check. Uh, or you have to do something like pull everything way back and it's a, it really slows you down. You have this Voyage Emissary here, which is possible to avoid, and I'd recommend trying to do that, but it's very easy for this to accidentally get pulled while you're fighting these things. You have this Void Touched Emissary here next to Windspeaker Heldis, which uh, basically means that you're required to fight this or do one big long death skip. Uh, you have this Void here, which isn't too bad. That's, a, that's an okay Void. Uh, and then you get the Void on this Tentacle Pack, which the Tentacle Pack has been something that groups are generally pulling anyways, but when you add a Void to it, it makes it really rough because the Void becomes a serious DPS check. If your tank can't, if you can't kill this Void by like the third cast, your tank's just going to die because these Tentacles, you can't kite from them, right? They'll just murder your whole group if you do, uh, so you, your tank can't really line. So depending on what your group composition is, you may not have a good way to deal with this pull. Uh, that being said, you probably can't use Bloodlust on it because you're going to need Bloodlust to time the key on bosses uh, in in higher in higher Keystone levels. In a lower Keystone level, a lot of times I make these videos where I talk about how bad voids are and people uh, in the comments tell me that it's the easiest emissary. Like if you're doing like a 15 or a 10 or something, um, a, 10, a 10 level key really is the, is the main one where I think voids are probably one of the easiest emissaries because you can very reliably stop them before they get their second or even third cast. Uh, but as you start pushing up to like, if you're trying to do that weekly 19, for instance, uh, this is very, this is likely to be a, a bit of a brick wall pull for you here if you don't have cooldowns going into it. But again, you probably can't lust it because you need lust for this boss. Uh, and then you'll probably, you definitely need lust to have come up sometime during the Volzith fight to have a reasonable hope of uh, beating it in, you know, a reasonable number of phases. Siege of Rallus, not too bad with uh, with Void Touched Emissaries active. You're going to have to deal with one over here. But this one actually is is not as bad as the one that's active during Tides Week, the one that shows up in this pack. So uh, it's, it's really not too bad. And teaming is going to make you pull all this stuff anyways. Uh, there are some clever ways that you can like bring spotters to this area, but 
even if you don't do that, you can probably still time this key as long as you're able to deal with Vitgoth in relatively few phases. Uh, so if you, if you can like push, if you if you can all in one of the platforms and kill the gripping, uh, usually the second platform is a good candidate for this. Then this dungeon won't take too long. If you're gonna kill five demolishing terrors on every platform, uh, then Vitgoth is gonna be a nine minute boss fight, and you're that's gonna be it's gonna be really hard to time the key. So uh, that's something that. You know, you probably you probably need to basically make the decision as you're running down to Bitgoth. Just look at how much time is left on your timer and figure out exactly how all in you're gonna have to go. Uh, sometimes I see these I see groups like go to Vitgoth and just choose to play it slow, uh, and they choose to play it slow even when they that's gonna definitely deplete them. So don't make that choice, right? Take take like a chance of winning that might go horribly wrong uh, and beating the timer rather than playing it slow and steady and guaranteeing a deplete. Void Week Templus Sothralis comes with a fun host of challenges. So uh, your first shroud of the dungeon is not allowed because of these voids, so it has to be a death skip or you have to fight some really annoying packs here. Uh, that might be your best bet in a lower level key. In a higher level key, to time this dungeon, you probably need to just do a death skip here and play without a battle res. Uh, and then you have to fight this boss without a battle res, which is pretty tough, uh, but doable. Uh, then from there, this shroud also gets scuffed by a void being added, so... Uh, you're going to have to just pull these or death skip it again, but your B-Res won't be up, so you just have to pull this thing uh, or do some kind of like Shadow Meld, Invis, you know, knife thing. Uh, then into this room, nothing too bad going on here. This boss fight can get pretty long on Tyrannical, but uh, much easier than most of the other stuff here. And then we get to the Galv room. In Galv's room, there's this beautiful pull here uh, on teaming of five Static Charge Dervishes and one Emissary of the Tides. So... Uh, this is just gonna, even on Tyrannical, this pull is gonna murder people, so, uh, you know, come in, come to this thing with cooldowns, use your cooldowns, your two minutes and stuff on this, and then recover them as you fight these things, uh, and then have them with Lust for pull on Galv, which again, you're gonna need, because it's Tyrannical, uh, and then you get through that, and then the rest of the dungeon should be pretty free, uh, should be fairly easy from there, you can avoid pulling both of these emissaries, uh, or you can just turn this into a, a death skip after you, uh, dump the eyeballs in, you can just run down here and do another death skip here and make it like a seven death skip dungeon. I don't know, Void Week Temple sucks. Uh, and again, we'll be <laughs> very happy to see Beguiling go. The Motherload Void Week is actually one of the more favorable patterns uh, in that you don't you don't even really need to fight any voids. So there are a couple that I have listed on this route, uh, but that's mostly just because teaming makes count really awful. Uh, you can instead choose to, like, you don't have to pull this void. You don't have to pull this void. Uh, these are good voids to pull generally if you have, like, a Fire Mage, because they can combust on them and, and get rid of them very quickly. But if you're playing without a Fire Mage, if you're playing with a comp that doesn't really burst down a, a Void Touch Emissary, this one in particular can get pretty rough because there's no good line of sight nearby. Uh, you might think that these little building things are line of sight, but they are not. There's not line of sight into this room uh, against this void, so... Uh, do not pull this thing unless you have a way to kill it before that third cast, basically. Uh, and then the rest of the way through the dungeon, you're just going to have to pull more trash than you're used to. Oh, <laughs> there's flies dropping for me in Najdar. All right, let me try and get those. Um, and then, yeah, you, you can pull some more. You can pull some more trash over here if you want. You can pull some more of these things and pull less. You know, you can, you, you can skip this. You can skip these. Uh, but it's teeming, so you're going to have to pull a, bot a lot of stuff in here. But the good news is, it's tyrannical, it's volcanic, neither of those affixes are bad in the Motherload. Uh, so overall, I'd say this is one of the better mo Motherload weeks relative to the other weeks for Motherload. We have an element of RNG here at the start, where this first Void Touched Emissary can spawn on either side, and that's independent of the Chosen Blood Matron spawn. So uh, you're going to want to go down whichever side of the bridge does not have the two Chosen Blood Matrons, because that makes this pull impossible and impossible to skip, because uh, they have True Sight. So you'll go down whichever side doesn't have those, and that might mean that you're forced to engage an extra Void here. If you don't have a Void there, they're the same count as a Worm, so you can just replace one, one with a Worm for later in your route. Uh, just pull these things onto an extra Worm is fine. Uh, beyond that, nothing too catastrophic in this dungeon this week. Uh, the Voids are mostly in good places. Uh, they're actually all skippable, except for the first one on the bridge, if you, if you really don't want to fight any Voids, but none of them are really that bad. Uh, placements so like fighting this void here is, is also okay uh, another option is to shroud around this way and then you could like fight these and enemies instead and you know depending on your composition you could even fight five lashes at once i've been in groups that have like like if you have stuff like monks for disease dispels and kicks um or shadow priest with mass dispel and stuff you you can you can go into this pool with five lashers if you want instead so you could shroud around this way and avoid fighting this nonsense entirely Generally, though, for most groups, this is going to be the, the safer pull just going into this void. You don't need Shroud to get through here. It's a tight uh, line you have to walk, but you can just walk between these two packs and not pull either of them, even on teaming. It's just a little bit of a, even a tighter line. Uh, this Void to Shemissary here is one that's going to be mandatory to pull. 
Uh, so be ready for that. But the good news is you can engage the skeleton pack without getting in combat with the void. If you tag the farthest skeleton uh, from the void and then just run away, the void won't get in combat with you. Uh, so you can save it for afterwards and you can pull an easier set of enemies onto it if you want. Uh, depending on your comp, though, you may have a fairly easy time just fighting the skeletons on top of it as well. Uh, it really just depends on like if you have a soothe for the the wicked frenzy uh, or not. That's kind of the main the main turning point on that. The other thing to note this week in Underot is a uh, volcanic is actually a real affix on Unbound Abomination. It makes that fight fairly difficult, so you 100% need to have bloodlust for this fight in a high level key. Uh, and even with bloodlust, it gets very dangerous towards the end. Uh, so watch out, you know, try not to die on this fight. It be ready for it to be much harder than you expected, and to be really the only the, the hardest volcanic experience of the expansion. Toldegore Void Week is actually not that bad of a Void Week. There are a couple of annoying voids, but really there are less of them than, like, <laughs> on Tides Week, you get the Void here, and you get the Void here, and those are actually worse ones than the ones you get on Void Week, right? Like this one you can just skip, uh, and as you go later into the dungeon, you know, you get this one here, which is totally fine, because there's Line of Sight literally right next to it, uh, and then... This one, yeah, you, you don't even have to deal with the one up here, which is normally, there's normally one up here on both the other weeks, and that one can be pretty obnoxious. So, uh, all in all, actually a fairly good beguiling week for Toldegore. You will have to deal with some voids near cannons. Usually the play for these in a high-level key is going to be like, CC the mobs that are nearby, kill the void by itself, and then pull a bunch of stuff onto the cannon. Uh, that's usually the safest way, because otherwise you're going to just take a bunch of damage from this void while you try and cannon everything down. Uh, and then beyond that, just watch out for the boss fights on Tyrannical. Uh, another boss that is tough with Volcanic actually is Overseer Corgus, because um, you're you know you have to stand still and you have to stand in these set places. So if your healer gets an explosive burst while they're back up against this corner of the room, that can be bad news for the healer because they can you know be taking a bunch of damage and not really be able to move, uh, and then have a volcano under them. So uh, do watch out for that. You know stuff like stand flasks, defensive options for that fight are a good idea as you start getting into high-level keys. And finally, Waycrest Manor. Void Week Waycrest Manor with teaming. <laughs> okay, teaming Void Waycrest Manor, we get some really nasty pulls. Uh, you get, like, Void, Witch, 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 Captain, Guard, uh, which the only realistic way to pull this is, like, pull everything away from the Void, kill it slowly. Th this Witch you can actually avoid engaging. You, you can fight just these four mobs uh, and pull them far away from the Void, and if you want, you can even CC these two. And that might be the best strategy, depending on depending on what the timer is looking like for you. Uh, if you just go in and try and YOLO this pull, unless you have a bunch of damage and, and big defensives, uh, it's going to be really, really tough. Beyond that, the main difficulty is is just Tyrannical bosses. Uh, tyrannical Heartsbane Triad, especially with Volcanic, actually. That, that Volcanic reduces your group's DPS when you're kind of turreting, if you have ranged casters. Uh, and that will that might slow you down on the first and third boss and get you to have an extra Dire Ritual. Uh, and that can be bad. Uh, and then Tyrannical Lord and Lady Waycrest, another tough boss fight. Uh, another thing you do have to watch out for here is if you employ the like a, a snap spot. So when you're fighting these Gloom Horrors, if you're fighting all seven at once, a common strategy is for the healer to go up to a little ledge back here. Uh, if you do that, there will be a lot of volcanoes back there for your healer to dodge. So uh, that also will reduce their HPS output or require them to you know have them take a lot of damage. So uh, do watch out for that. And if you're using the same sort of strategy... Uh, you may not know about this one, but on Gorak Toll, there's like a little torch that your healer can stand on up here. And if they stand up there, the little gloom horrors he summons don't leap to anybody. Uh, but again, this is a bad week to do that because of the volcanic that will then murder your healer that's standing up there because they can't really move from that spot. So uh, watch out for those things. Watch out for where volcanic adds a couple restrictions. There are there are even a few other spots now that I think about it. Uh, like sometimes when you're fighting these gorgers, depending on what your route's looking like, you may want your healer to be standing on like the little bookcase over here so that the gorgers don't jump on anybody. Uh, and that again will be a volcanic problem this week. Uh, or the fountain over here. Luckily the fountain, if you're standing in the fountain, there's a lot of room, room to move around. If you're listening to this and you're like, what is this guy on about? Don't worry about it. It's not something that you need to do. Uh, it's really something that just starts, starts to come into play and like in super high level keys to make those enemies not do their mechanics is to stand in a spot that they can't like jump to. Um, but you really have to be careful of those kind of things on Volcanic Week is the main point that I'm trying to get across. Anyways, uh, that's all the dungeons I have for you this week. Next week, we will not have a episode of This Week in Mythic Plus, nor will we have one probably for the next one or two weeks thereafter, uh, as I have some other stuff going on that I'll be most very, very busy with. Uh, and then as soon as I can, I'll get back to making this series for Awakened. 
Uh, and I'll try and make some other Awakened content. I'll try and put some Awakened dungeon runs up on this YouTube channel uh, and more stuff like that. But again, next couple weeks, a fairly busy time for me. So uh, we're going to be going you know, far away from the old daily videos that I was able to put out for the last couple months and uh, maybe go down to like two videos a week for a little while and then back up to daily videos uh, once things clear up a little bit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, and I will still be streaming a lot over the next couple weeks. So if you're interested in uh, asking any questions about Mythic Plus, uh, I will always be happy to answer those there, twitch.tv slash Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.